G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to take a close look at blueprints and projectors. We'll start off with blueprints. When you've got a ship that you're happy with and you want to be able to use it in the future, it's a good idea to create a blueprint of it. If you're anything like me before you use it, because you'll probably end up knocking off bits that you want. But before you go and press Ctrl B, first make sure that you've named your ship. Open up your control panel, go to the info page, and if it's named as small grid, don't do what I did for years and create a thousand different small grid and a thousand different large grid blueprints that you can never quite remember what the ship was supposed to be and can never find the ship you actually want. Name it something. So for this ship, let's call it Small Atmo Welder. That way we'll be able to find it it's clear what it is. For ships like the Talisman I usually come up with names so that I can find them even more quickly as there might be a few other ships with a similar purpose. Now that we've named our ship we can press Control B and it will show up in our list. So if we type small atmo, there we go, we've got our small atmo welder and it shows up our little screenshot. If we're in creative mode we can simply double click on that, press Control V and you'll be able to paste another copy into the world. Be careful if you've created your blueprint with the engines off, because if you paste up here, the engines are still going to be off. And that's going to end poorly. So it can be a good idea, whenever you create your blueprints, to turn everything on. And if we press Ctrl B again, it's not going to overwrite the other blueprint. It's going to create a second blueprint with an underscore number following it. Since we don't really want that other one, let's delete it. And we'll rename this one without the underscore one. So to do that, we go to details, click on rename, and we can delete the number. Now, if we take this ship and paste it in since it's already powered on, everything should be fine and it should hover right where it is. Which makes things a lot safer. If you're in survival, you're not going to be able to just paste in a ship. So for that, you need to use a projector. A projector block looks like this. You can see in the toolbar the icon for the projector block. And on that image, if you look really, really carefully, you can kind of get a hint that the top circle there has a bit of a cross on it. That's important. If you look at this projector block, you can see that this circle has nothing affecting it. This circle has something coming in from the top and the bottom. This one has nothing. And this one has lines coming in from all sides. That's because... This cross symbol indicates the top of the projector. This line symbol indica indicates the front. It's the exact same indication if we use large ship projectors. Again, cross on the top and line on the front. Large ship projectors can only build large ships and small projector blocks can only build small. Let's have a quick look at how the projector block functions. If we go into our control panel, we can see the projector block here. We've got the usual buttons up the top as always, and then we've got our blueprints button, and then these adjustments down here. So let's select a blueprint, and for this one, we're going to use this blueprint I created. Once you select a blueprint from the list, the projector creates a holographic representation of that blueprint that you can then build from. You can adjust the position of that blueprint by adjusting these sliders. So we've got our horizontal offset, which will slide it sideways like so. And this is all relative to that orientation of the projector. So this vertical offset is going to move it up and down according to where that cross is oriented to. This forward offset will move it forward and backwards because we know which way is forward. 
you've also got three rotate commands, pitch, yaw, and roll. Our pitch rotates the craft sideways, which I think should have worked the other way, and yaw then does what I think pitch should do, but roll works as expected. If we look more closely at this projection of the blueprint, we can see that some of the blocks are really quite transparent and some are a little more solid. The ones that are more solid are the ones we're able to build. So if I have a welder out, I can actually weld that block. And you'll notice that as I weld, the next block in the sequence becomes buildable. That's because the only blocks that are buildable are blocks that are in some way attached to the grid that the projector block is on. It does not have to be the projector itself. As you can see, we're just attached to the battery for these ones. If we're finished with a blueprint and we don't want to use it anymore, we can actually just click the remove bu button and it will remove that blueprint. The same thing will happen if you click on the blueprints button. Now we are going to build our small Atmo Miner, so we'll double click on that. And we'll see that our orientation is a bit odd, so let's try and fix this. Oh dear, I can't seem to interact. No! Well, this is a convenient demonstration of one of the downsides of having your projection actually line up over your keypad. Avoid that if you can. There's some fairly simple ways of getting around this though. So, let's make this a bit easier. Let's pop an antenna on there. Press Shift K. And we should be able to access the terminal of this ship and then access our projector. You can see that using an antenna actually makes controlling the position of this projection even easier because I get a better view. And we can see that this blueprint isn't lined up with the direction of the projector. So we will need to rotate it just a little bit to make sure it lines up. Then we can adjust these offsets until we have it where we need it so that we can actually build this thing. It's usually a good idea to build slightly out from the projector block so that you have something to grind down afterwards to disconnect the ship. So if we do this and add a couple more pieces, we can now see that that battery is buildable. If we're standing in the middle of this projection, it can be quite hard to see what's buildable. So we have another option in the projector. We have this show only buildable. If we check that, you can see that only this battery is visible. And if we weld it, the blocks that are connected to it become visible. And as we add more pieces, more pieces become accessible. This function is particularly important and useful when you're building large ships, I think, because you're going inside and outside the blocks and you might be moving through corridors that sort of exist and don't, being able to see only the blocks that can be built is incredibly useful. The other thing to note is in the projector screen of the control panel, we can see the blocks remaining on our build. So we can check to make sure we have actually welded everything before we turn off the projector and disconnect the ship. Particularly if you're like me and you have a habit of missing stuff, this will prevent you from missing some gyroscopes or other important blocks. You might notice when I was setting up that projector for this ship, I've had to do a lot of offsets. How can we see what those offsets are? Well, that's why I built these little ships over here. They're for this demonstration. If we press K and we go to info, we can turn on this checkbox, the show grid pivot. That pivot point is what this projector gets centered on if everything's set to its default. So we can see on this ship here, we've got this XYZ coordinate marker where I've actually set this up so the black block is the 000, the Y, the green block is Y plus 1, 
Red is X plus one or Z plus one. I don't really know which way. Anyway, green is up, red is right, blue is forward. And that is the positions relative to those on the projector block. So if we were to project this as a blueprint, we would expect that the cockpit would be two blocks forward of the projector, as this black block will overlie the projector. And we can show that here by going to our projector block, clicking on blueprints, and I remember what I named this one, which is this, and click OK. And you can see that's exactly what happened. The black block is overlying the projector, the blue which is forward, and one other block is there before we see our cockpit. If we look at this one, we are actually behind the forward direction. So we're going to expect our cockpit to actually intersect with the projection grid. And you can see that here, the cockpit is intersecting with the battery. This one is set off to the right of the projector. And again, from the projector's point of view, that cockpit's to the right. Finally, this one I've rotated. So yes, blue is forward, but if we're thinking of this from the orientation of the projector block, it's actually this way. Blue is forward, green is up, red is right. So that means these blocks are going to be embedded below the height of the projector. And, ta-da, it's below. So how can we control where that is positioned? Well, it's defined as soon as you place your first block. And if you want control over it, don't use an armor block. If we drop an armor block that way, you'll see that it's matching what I'm seeing. The next one isn't. The next one isn't. That one isn't. They basically just gradually rotate. You can see that it's actually this top position that's rotating. We're starting with up being up, then up goes forward, then up goes down, then up goes backwards, and then back to the original position. It might be better to start with a block that has a fixed orientation, and most functional blocks do. If we look at a landing gear, we can see that this piston points towards the front. So if we try and place this a different way, we're still having the blue point in the same direction. We're still having front defined the same way. If we were to build a line of blocks up like this, and then what we'll do is we'll place, and then we can cut these blocks here. If I knock those blocks off the top, you can see now that this pivot point is actually for these three blocks and it is not even attached to the grid. That's going to be a common situation for your small ship builds, where you start off with a block that's only really to set yourself up and then you end up with a grid pivot that's way off. If we go over to our welder here that's slowly destroying the base, you can see its grid pivot is actually that marker over here because that's where I started its little base piece. If we want to fix where this is placed so we can make things a bit easier for printing, we can do that. And one of the ways to do that is to place down a block. We now know that this direction is forward, so I'll just make this easier for me to remember. Forward and up. This grid is defined and has its pivot point. If I, while I'm in creative mode, copy this ship, I can then actually paste it onto this grid. You can do this with any group of blocks in creative mode and you just have to line it up so that it's actually attached to the grid you want it to be attached to. So I can paste it in and then this ship has now inherited this grid pivot. 
So if I delete these blocks, the new grid pivot for this hovering welding ship is actually in this position, which may make it easier to place it on a projector. And you can see that this is very different to this. One thing to note, it also inherits the name. So make sure you change that before you create your blueprint if you use this technique to fix your pivot point. If you're having trouble placing your blueprint onto your projector and you can't really tell where it's at, one option is like I did before to place an antenna on there. The other option to use a remote control or a cockpit. If we place a remote control on there, we can then press Shift K and we can take control of this grid. We can then, on our hotbar, actually add these controls to our G menu. So we can increase the horizontal offset, decrease, Increase vertical, decrease vertical, etc, etc. And if you press these buttons, you can see that we're shifting one block at a time. So this can be helpful if you place your character in a good position or if you have a camera that will help you place it, rather than having to do it through the menu. And you can see the numbers are actually showing up on our hotbar so we can see what our offset is. That can be a very useful way of getting around. The limitations of trying to do this through our control panel like so where we have limited ability to see where this is positioned. The last thing I want to look at is how to use projectors to make repairs easier for our ships. Particularly ships like mining vessels that have a tendency to get damaged a little bit you want to make sure that you're repairing them correctly and it makes your repairs much much faster. So we can actually put a projector block onto our ship. Make sure that our orientation is correct. So we've got our cross up and our line forward. Yep. Let's replace that antenna that we deleted from in there. And then let's hop in. Make sure our ship is named before we create a, create a blueprint of it. Yep. Small Atmo weld repair. And then press control B. Now, we hop in our ship. We go to our projector. We select our blueprint. Okay, and we can see, the luck would have it, it's actually almost lined up. What we want to do with this projector is first set it so that it keeps the projection, that way this will always be on and always showing us a holographic representation of our blocks that are missing, and the blueprint won't disappear once we finish construction. And then we're going to need to change our offset. This one is definitely worth setting up on our hotbar. The orientation, the rotation of it seems to be right. So let's go to our projector block and we'll increase our horizontal, decrease our horizontal, we'll add our vertical and our forward offsets. Now, you can see that it is actually set up correctly and that's our horizontal lined up properly. Our vertical is now lined up properly. So it's just our forward. And there we go. Looks like everything's good. So let's test. First off, let's hit the ground. Ooh, whoops. Maybe a bit hard. The demonstration will still work. Let's run out to our wreck and see what the damage is. Hopefully, the projector is still intact. And you can see that it is. Our blocks that are missing are in holographic form. So we can grab our welder, we can replace our cockpit, replace our front left, front right welder, let's position ourselves a bit better. Place that one, 
If we have a look, we can then go into our control panel, select our projector, and we can see that it's telling us it's complete. There is nothing on this ship that's missing, which is great. When we hover over the Keep Blueprint button, we get a tooltip that says that this can sometimes harm performance. If you're having performance troubles, it's worth trying and seeing if getting rid of these will help. But there is a downside to that. As I've just set up, we've got the blueprint active and now we've welded up the piece. When we then get rid of a piece, crashing, welding it, I mean grinding it, however we remove it, the blueprint projection doesn't come back. Even if you turn off the projector, turn it on again, it doesn't fix it. The blueprint is wiped from the projector the moment it's complete. And that's why we have the keep projection button. Once we finish the construction, the projection will still remain present. It just won't show up anything until a block is missing. And I think it's those checks for whether a block is missing that may harm performance. As you can see, you can remove and replace the blocks as many times as you like, and it will still keep coming back as a projection for you to weld again. Hopefully this will be useful to protect any of your ships that have some intricate designs, particularly with armor work. It can be a real hassle trying to replace all those corners and curves and things that you build. Whereas once you've got a projector block on board, you just have to get the steel plates in your inventory and weld. And it's so much quicker to replace that way. If you're like me and you have a tendency to damage everything nice that you own. <sighs> anyway. These projectors are awesome because you can then take into your survival worlds other people's amazing builds from the workshop. If you're looking for those builds in your workshop, either in your blueprint list, either type in the name or anything from the workshop will show up with a steam icon like this at the bottom of your list. I hope this helps you guys be able to use projectors a bit more effectively. It certainly helped me once I understood about this grid pivot thing my use of projectors has become so so much better and I can really understand what I'm doing with them now whereas before trying to work this out I was useless one final thing to remember about building from projections without any uranium on board if you're a reactor powered ship without any ice on board if you're a hydrogen powered ship as soon as you disconnect from the original build it's going to drop like a stone so you're going to need to make sure that you've got power and you've got fuel before you disconnect so that's a bit of an intro into blueprints if you've got any tips of your own that you think might be helpful please let me know in the comments I'm actually planning on doing a second part of this for some extra build tips using projectors. So any tips you give, I will hopefully be able to include in that video at a later stage. As always, there's plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.